Life Radio, episode number 108. Gary and Will. I was really hoping you knew the episode number. Always. Don't front. I'm Gary. I'm Will. We are Fit for Life Radio. This week we are going to be talking about, so more of an abstract. Yeah, we're just going to kind of, we're going to start and just see we where it a, goes. We have a thought a single thought. A single thought. How many minutes can you get out of a single thought? That we want to expunge on. Expunge? Mm-hmm. That's one of those words. Is that, that the word? That you hear someone say and you know it's not a word. But if you use it in just the right. Let's situ- see what expunge <laughs> means. Situation. That's completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> expunge means to erase. Not, we're to, gonna not e- to elaborate on. We're going to expand on. Look up some. Uh, cinnamon. <laughs> cinnamon. 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 Cinnamon for elaborate. Oh my god. And then look up cinnamon. <laughs> oh. Synonyms of elaborate. Oh shit. It's giving me similar to elaborate instead of elaborate. <laughs> Tell that to a. Uh, put that on like a fourth grade test. Oh my god. Test. English? English, man. That's how you f- that's that's why school's not fair, man. That's why English isn't fair. It's not. Elaborate. Elaborate. Dude, when people learn English as a second language, like, I just feel bad. Because there's so many rules that don't make sense. Mm-hmm. And so many words, it's like, this word's the same, but it means something else. And it could mean something completely opposite, too. Not even. Come on. Well, anyways, I guess, you know, that's kind of what we're going to be throwing at people today. Yeah. Because we're going to be talking about food processing. Food processing and not where we're like not like not like the nitty-gritty of the process itself so the initial thought was a friend (coughs) my wife likes walnuts and he has a walnut tree (laughs) i thought it's a a joke here somewhere so he brought over some walnuts (laughs) and i quickly realized when i went to try to crack the walnuts that we're gonna need. What did you try to crack them with? What was your process of like? Because I know you try to use more than one. The tool. first one was these people on Google who just take two walnuts in their hand and squeeze them together and they crack. They gotta be fake walnuts. You tried that, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I went and got a nutcracker from Target, which didn't. F- I remember in my mind, like at my grandparents' house when I was eight. What a nutcracker should feel like. There was like this nutcracker. They would have a basket of nuts around yeah. the fireplace. Was that like a, our grandparents' thing? Because my grandparents mm-hmm. had the same thing. And I just remember in my mind the weight and sturdiness of those nutcrackers. And these just didn't feel it the same. Felt, and they were did only, it feel like you were holding two chopsticks? They were only $4, no. you know? And that's the, the funny thing with price sometimes where you're just like, eh, these should be more. I feel like these should be more. Yeah, like a nine ninety nine <laughs> pair of yeah. like nutcrackers, nutcrackers is probably more sturdy. So... I was willing to go 20. Need those nuts. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, that wasn't working, right? So then a hammer, you know. And then that it's not like that worked right away nah. either. But you eventually get it going. And so, anyways, the thing you realize is food's hard to get. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when you, you think, you think about, about that. And you think about this $5 bag of walnuts where you can just sit there and grab handfuls of walnuts and eat them. And... And what it would take to get one walnut if mm-hmm. you had to crack it. like. And I, I then I kind of remembered when I was watching uh, Naked and Afraid, and they found an almond tree. And they couldn't. And they couldn't get into the almonds? It took them three days to get uh, into one of the almonds. And you realize, man, just. And so what we want to propose here is just it's just a fun thought game. So, again, this is going to come back to a, a simple thing we always preach is your food environment. Yeah. right? And we live in a food environment where food. It's just super easily accessible. And like we've talked about before, there's a scale, uh, a spectrum of food processing, right? You have apple, and you have applesauce, and then you have apple pie. So we're not trying to, like, even bash, oh, you you know, any version per se, because the bag of walnuts is still just about as unprocessed as you can get. Yeah. It's not like you're eating walnut pie. That's... Has anyone ever made walnut pie? They probably have, but they got cast out of society <laughs> for it. <laughs> Why is that not a thing? Walnut so, pie. Um, well, I guess you can put walnuts on top, like a pecan pie. the point we're trying to make is how even the, un, quote, unquote, unprocessed, unprocessed whole foods. foods are still processed because 
the hardest step we get to miss out on because of our food environment. Yeah. It's it just everything is so convenient. So we can take take anything. Take nuts, almonds, right? Take meat. Okay, well the completely unprocessed version of meat is you have to go hunt it. Yeah. Right? So then an so that involves like it. walking and running and finding it and killing it and then then you got to drag it back to where you need to eat it. you got to drag it back and then you have to process it and you know that's, those are huge steps, right? And you see where it may have taken you days to get that food, whereas we can just walk in the grocery store and get it, right? And still, yeah, then you take home that meat, and that's pretty much the most unprocessed form of food in our normal society, but you actually realize it's still quite how, how many How many steps are already out of the way when we go get what we would even consider an unprocessed food, like a whole yeah. food? Like they've done almost all of the work, even though like you have to cook it and prepare it, and we think of that as being the work. That's like nothing in the in the whole grand mm-hmm. scheme of what you have to do to get something like that. Yeah. The other element to this isn't even just the work. It's also the amounts and portions, right? Yeah. Where now, let's take it a step further. We ultimately have almost unlimited access to unlimited amounts, right? So now it's not even just, well, yeah, finding 10 walnuts and then cracking and getting to the 10 walnuts is hard enough. But then what if you only have 10? Right, or you only have them during fall yep. or w- whatnot. So, but now you factor in, oh, we actually have them all year round, and depending on your budget, on you could have an unlimited amount, yeah. right? So, those you see that amount, the process of, of acquiring the food, the hardest things are all now don't exist, yeah, they're taken care of, right. And then let's factor in, yeah, most people aren't just eating. Now we're processing this stuff even further to make it taste even better, to make us eat even more of it. And you just, again, the, the thought process is, man, look, we our environment is really working against us. Yeah. And you have to guard against that. There's just no way to just kind of like float along and think you're just going to eat an appro- appropriate amount of food. Yeah. Yeah, just on a, on a whim. Because you see, before our environment, which was Mother Nature. You got to go get it. <laughs> it created, that environment was impossible almost to overeat, mm-hmm. right? Unless you landed in a bounty of, yeah, which you know, goodness. But even, real. even then, things were seasonal, right? Yeah. So say you live in a tropical or close to a tropical environment and there is fruit, right? Or even we'll just say, yeah, fr- if you lived in North, Northern America and all of a sudden there's berries everywhere but that would be for like two weeks yeah those are going to go away Mm -hmm. so any any really fruit or vegetable or produce plant food is is somewhat seasonal right and if it's not it's something like a root veggie which you had to dig up and you would eventually in your area dig them all up and you'd have to go to another area Mm -hmm. which then involves lots of moving and finding these places and as you can see the physical nature was all built in whereas now we just can get on our phone and instacart have baby get them delivered yeah like which is just nuts so and not saying like don't do these things but be aware of mm-hmm. them um and like you know like hey if you do want to hunt your own food great like yeah <laughs> that's actually uh, not a bad way to go um but there's just so many things we don't have to do anymore yeah and like will said the key is be aware maybe just stop and think whenever it's just kind of notice when you eat something think of how you w- would have had to acquire that originally and maybe the amount, right? So, yeah, you stop to eat an apple, and luckily you can have a bag of 12 apples, and if you want it, you go to the store and buy five more. Yeah. But then stop and think, man, this apple would normally only be available in this specific region for this specific season, mm-hmm. right? And I, we get to have it 24-7 on demand. Yeah. You know, it's and w- when you start n- looking at every single food you eat, you just, I mean, it would really help you, ra- like, realize the food environment thing that we always talk about. And so another good one is, okay, now we're even talking about relatively whole and processed foods. Apple, walnut. Meat. Meat. Let's go, we're, let's do something processed. Let's, let's look at that cookie, right? Flour, sugar. Butter. Butter. Whatever else. <laughs> chocolate chip, right? Yeah. Now let's break chocolate chip down into oh man, cacao butter, cacao cocoa butter, cocoa 
yeah. butter. When does it become cacao? It when comes does it from a cacao. Cocoa cacao yeah. It comes from a cacao seed, but at some point in the process, mm-hmm. it becomes cocoa, and I don't understand when. Yeah. So let's break that down. So I mean, this is how crazy. Like humans are quite amazing. <laughs> in what I mean, we, we are. Accomplish. So like, you take a chocolate chip cookie, which we would you would normally just scarf down the whole sleeve of these bad boys and never think twice. But let's think twice. This we're gonna think thrice. So the cocoa. Well, that only comes from, like, super specific tropical regions yeah. on the planet. So the fact that we're in Virginia or you're in wherever eating a chocolate chip is quite amazing. And then the sugar to make up the chocolate chip and in the cookie is from, comes from sugar cane. Mm-hmm. Again, super regional. And you f- if you've seen a sugar cane or Google a sugar cane, obviously, it <laughs> where's the actual sugar granules? Yeah. Well, it has to – you have to – get all the sugar canes and I don't, however it's you, processed down you in the process sugar, right? the sugar out somehow. which probably takes fancy machines right yeah so if you try to eat and things like that do it yourself i would imagine you would it would take a long it's a lot time. of work probably yeah. and same thing for flour right if you so for oh one, man you'd have to have proper soil proper conditions to then grow the wheat and then look at wheat like that's nothing close wheat, to what flour is. And look at flour. And then you would realize you'd have to stone grind it yourself. Yeah. Um, and it would be a very laborious, intensive, long process. Yeah. Right? And then from there, you then – so now that you've sourced your flour, which would have taken, you know, whatever, I don't even know, but eight months, 12 months, how Who much knows? do you, you got to grow it? Yeah, I don't know. Because you're not going to find it out in the wild. And then – so you've <laughs> you've harvested your wheat. You've processed it. It's processed – process prosthetic leg prosthetic <laughs> you've processed it down down you, and you went somewhere else to harvest your your sugar process that down oh, by the way you you either found a wild animal or started to um you know herd some cows Just milk a random animal you got, and you got your milk so that you can then make your, your chocolate chip with your cocoa that you got from and then you use that another to part make of a world. little bit of butter and then you also make your butter churn that and which, physical, which is a physical, physical labor process and then, yeah, you combine it all and, and heat it up, and you have your cookie. Yeah. Wow. And that's, <laughs> that's a lot. Yeah. You know? And the, the, the crazy thing is, like, it's a double-edged sword. Like, I think as people, we're always trying to, like, make things easier. Mm-hmm. Like, that's probably our, our curse is that we always want things to be easier, and it's just kind of driven yeah. us to develop technology. Mm-hmm. And, like, that was important when we were, you know, like, trying to survive mm-hmm. and – you know, feeding a population of a city, but now yeah. it's almost so far mm-hmm. that, you know, like we don't need it to be like this. Well, look at now. So we could even say that, that whole process to make the cookie. But then you could even say, well, at least 60 years ago, you might have even had to drive to separate places to get these ingredients. Yeah. And then you had to come home and cook it yourself, bake it yourself. Whereas then, what, whatever, when food processing, prepackaged food came about 30, 40, no, nah, it was like <laughs> 50 years ago. It's 2021, man, not this, 2000. This is true. I, I still feel like, you know, when you think of time, you always think of like when you were about 10. Yeah. So I always think of like 1990. Yeah, like hey, 1970 95. was still 30 years ago. Nah. But anyways, whenever Chips Ahoy came about, uh, now all of a sudden you can have cookies, that delicious morsel of sugar, flour, butter, and you didn't even have to make it. Mm-hmm. You just bought it, oh, ripped open the package and ate it. Boom. And at least then – you had to drive to the store to get it. Now you can have your groceries and food delivered to you, so you don't even have to walk. Bring me the cookies. Yeah. So you see, again, food environment is is king, yeah. right? And how, as we strive to make things easier, it's actually it's a big problem yeah. for you know nutrition. Well, we kind of shifted problems, right? And before it was like we have to ma- make sure we have enough food to survive. And Mm -hmm. now it's like we have to make sure we don't eat too much in order to survive or thrive, you know. So it's like it would be great to be somewhere in the middle, but we're not very good at that as a Mm -hmm. species. And, again, just bring awareness and thought to almost – again, make it a little thought game. You sit down and eat something be like, how would I have acquired this before? Where? And just notice that. And Yeah, how much work would it have taken to make my meal, (laughs) Mm -hmm. you know. And, again, we're not – advocating that's how it should be yeah. again but just realize that a lot of work was done so you could have that easy mm-hmm. even wholly unprocessed meal of say like 
chicken and broccoli and white rice. Like, overall, a pretty, well, we'd say a pretty whole meal. Or even, yeah. no, chicken, broccoli, and a sweet potato, right? All very whole foods in, in most people's minds. But there's still a lot of work done, you mm-hmm. know? You had to raise the chicken. You had to kill the chicken. You had to pluck the feathers. You had to cut it up. Like, you didn't have to do that, and somebody else did. Yep. So um, I think it's important to put that into perspective for mm-hmm. people. Yeah. And, I mean, you go back to – and I think that's where a lot of people, you know, a lot of people will go like, we just need to eat traditional meals and foods. And yeah, that certainly will help. But I think a lot of people miss the bigger picture, which is the in- the environment, right? It was because even then it was possible to maybe eat too much or you could, but at least we had to, yeah, typically you might have lived on a farm or had to go to, you know, everything was still the process of getting things took more, more work more work right and mm-hmm. ultimately we didn't have as much available yeah um and that those are the biggest things right it's it's you know not overeating and yet yeah, eating as unprocessed foods as possible is going to be helpful and but still at some point because of the environment we have now we can still get whatever we want whenever we whenever want. we want so until you really truly commit to um you know, but that working against that and, and realizing you're going to have to say no to things. Mm-hmm. That's the biggest thing. You At some point, you have to say no. Yeah. You know, and you have to come to grips with that and then practice that. You mm-hmm. know, expect the more social you are, right, or maybe you have a job where you're always on the go and you're always offered food and or eating out is always this thing. It's Even if you don't want to, you're going to have to. Say n- learn to say yeah. no at some point, yeah. right? You, you have to do that. And Otherwise, that you're going to be door dashing all your meals. Mm-hmm. You can't do that. Which you're going to eventually have to say no to. Or there's going to be a whole generation that's going to be, that's what they came up with, and then they're struggling, and they're going to have to face, man, I, I, I need to get grips with my nutrition intake. What's the biggest step? It's, it's not necessarily going to be pick a different menu item. It's going to be like, you need to learn how to cook some food at your own house. Yeah, or at least maybe the side step is instead of um, ordering DoorDash from a restaurant, order your groceries to your house and then cook your meals. What a crazy thing, you know? And I think that's ultimately going to be the biggest piece that will still be in place. Mm -hmm. That's probably like a good habit. A good thing is like cook your meals. Yeah. You know, as easy, uh, again, like I said, the gro- grocery delivery, that is great because it takes away time, you know, another excuse, which could be I don't have time to go grocery shopping. Yeah. So now it's not an excuse, um, but we have to be careful if we're now door dashing meals from restaurants all the time, it's going to be easier to overeat, right? So, but we can still say, hey. If you know me, you know I'm always on the run, up early and home late. So having a three-hour morning routine isn't really in the cards for me. What is in the cards is AG1. It's a fast way to get vitamins and minerals I need to perform. I first gave AG1 a try because I wanted a single solution that helps support my entire body by filling in nutrient gaps and simplifying my morning routine. Since drinking AG1 daily, I've always felt strong and energized and ready to attack the day. Not only does AG1 deliver my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre- and probiotics, and more, it's a powerful, healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. It's one scoop mixed in water once a day and every day. I know that AG1 is giving my body high-quality nutrition. Every batch of AG1 goes through a rigorous testing process so you know that it's safe. And AG1 ingredients are sourced for absorption, potency, and nutrition density. AG1 is a supplement that I trust to provide the support my body needs daily, and that's why I'm excited to welcome them as a new partner. Here is your chance to start every day this season with a gift to yourself. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash proven grit. That's drinkag1.com slash proven grit. Check it out. Majority of the food you put in your mouth cook it yourself so you're in control right mm-hmm. and then use leverage these other modern technologies to your advantage right? yeah i think that's a good way to use that tool instead of yeah yeah the opposite which is hurting you with the door dash and 
mm -hmm. all that. I think it's okay to do a little bit of work yeah. for things. And I know that goes counter to like what we do as a species, but like I still do think it is important to do that because when you take all of the work away from something, one, like you appreciate it a little bit less, right? If you had to go out and hunt and kill an animal and clean it, you're going to really appreciate the food. You're not going to waste any of it. And um, I guarantee you're not going to overeat it. Like you're going to eat just, you know, the right amount and make it, make it last. Um, whereas if I can just go out and buy like the world's cheapest ground beef, whatever, you know, and I have to work for it. Or even just like the cookies that are, you know, 79 cents for a box or something. Um, you're just not very appreciative of it because of the lack of, you know, I guess effort that was required mm -hmm. in getting it. So yeah. that's another piece of it too. Um, well, so. that's a whole nother rabbit hole. Oh, that is a way, yeah. Dopamine and stuff. Yeah. You know, it's where obviously eating highly processed engineered food is a quick, easy, cheap dopamine hit. Mm -hmm. So it's like, well, at least if you're going to have that, you can associate it with you some, know, work. some work or like we've talked about before, make it a family thing, right? Like yeah. cook, make the cookies with your kids and create make an, it ex an, experience. an experience to where it's just not about only that the, hit the food and that quick dopamine hit yeah so then you're actually it's you know the experience is wrapped in there yeah side note on that that it, I, I got into a rabbit hole with ben on this um but just like about you know quick hits of dopamine and stuff it's important to like do some work and they say like pain before pleasure is the easy way to think about it so i've been trying before i do anything that's fun or even like like eating something that is, you know, processed or highly processed, doing the hard things, doing the work mm -hmm. or whatever before then. And I know it seems like such a cliche from like years ago of like work, work, work before you play. But I do think it's important to associate some level of discomfort um, and not even using it as a reward, but like mm -hmm. you have to do the discomfort before you get to the fun stuff. Yeah. And it, it will help you not fall, you know, so far to always just seeking the fun, the fun, the fun. Um, and with that, I mean any experience, it's really high dopamine. But um, so I, I've been playing with that too. Um, and it actually is, it's kind of nice. And I realized to go on a whole nother tangent, how good it feels to do like, at least for me, like manual labor. And I know it sounds wild, but like doing something really hard outside or building something, mm -hmm. did you just feel good? Mm. Glad you mentioned that. Good. Because <laughs> I'm about to get a bunch of uh, patio chairs in. <laughs> <laughs> that I need to put together. So this is great too. I uh, read in here on Precision Nutrition, they have an article on food processing. And w one other interesting thing too, and we talked about this before is Obviously, the more highly processed food is, typically the bigger like combination of stuff, it, like foods together, there will be, which ultimately drives up hunger, makes things more irresistible, and so does variety. And if you think about it, we need feel like we need these things because, again, all that work before and satisfaction for, of that is taken out. Yeah. So it's like, ooh. Let me have a harder decision to make. Oh, all these choices make it more interesting, mm -hmm. right? That's true. So then it helps you. Oh, there's a new flavor of and it's of, more exciting of Pringles. You mean there's a sour cream loaded baked potato flavor of Pringles, even though I've already had 42 other flavors. But I, that's what gets you excited. So you almost feel like work from choosing a flavor. Yeah. When the reality is, think about it. If you were walking in the forest and hadn't had food in three days, and you stumble on a walnut tree. And then, yeah, you eventually get to those walnuts. You're, I guarantee you, and again, this comes back to the dopamine and the way our brain works, those walnuts and the excitement are going to be just as much. Bro, they're going to – best walnuts you've ever yes. had because, because of the discomfort of, like, the work mm -hmm. and doing it. So, like, the reward is and, great. And there's no other choice, right? Yeah, that's it. You're not sitting there, ooh – um, there's five other things I could be having. Yeah, you're like, nah, damn, I'm glad I found these walnuts so I can <laughs> stay alive. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, I can, it is an important takeaway is like, you know, the, the more you lean into the, we'll call it pain. It's not like you're getting hurt. Discomfort. But the more you lean into the discomfort, it kind of, you know, takes you to that pain side. 
And then when you have something like even the walnut in that, that equation, it's going to be so good because you have been so mm-hmm. far to that, that discomfort side that, you know, it mm-hmm. tastes even better. And like, I think anyone who's done like a really hard day's work, like physically, yeah. when you come in for that dinner, bro, dinner is good after you've had a really hard day of, of working. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that's something that's important to note too. Like check in or like after you go on a hike or something, how mm-hmm. do you feel when you get done with that and you have that hot meal? Yep. You feel phenomenal and it tastes great and it might just be the most simple thing ever. Yeah. Um, so just another thing maybe to bring awareness to, and I'm not saying you have to put yourself in you know, super hard situations every day or anything, but um, I'm sure some of us come upon days like that. So just a little awareness to those days to see mm-hmm. how you feel. Yeah. And just apply, you're just applying like a counter thought. You know, because we just go through our days chasing comfort and basically not really grateful for the way things are. You know, I mean, you could look at it like just turning on your water and having clean water. Yeah. Right. I mean, you could, you could, that's not normal for everybody or at all times of human history. It's, it's pretty rare. Yeah. It's pretty Um, recent. So again, we just take it all for granted that we have water on tap, that we have refrigerators full of food that we can drive down the street and get anything we want Mm -hmm. and again then that also ironically leads to lots of problems so it's a great thing it's a good thing it eliminates problems like starvation but it creates other (laughs) ones too but it creates more and really all we want you to do is respect that right and then the crazy thing is by respecting that you can then value saying no more or creating parameters Mm -hmm. with your eating and then actually get dopamine hits so the things you're chasing by eating all this food and variety of food and amounts of food you can actually get the same feelings from fighting from saying no and from fighting it Mm -hmm. once you value it and appreciate it enough yeah and on the extreme flip side and this was listening to andrew huberman who's a neuro Scientist. scientist and talks about all this stuff uh, that's so you could look at someone who's uh, anorexic mm-hmm. eating disorder and think they're crazy right but literally what happens is they create the pathways in their brain to where they're getting those same dopamine hits from refusing food from refusing certain foods or limiting their, their self to certain foods so then yeah saying no to this thing oh, they actually get they the feel s- great the same they're hit proud and that you could get from you know eating a cupcake and that's what's going on. That's how it's like possible. And they're actually getting the same satisfaction and then they chase it to an extreme. Yeah. Right? And in their brain, like everything's fine and everything's mm-hmm. correct and they're doing a good job for themselves. So that's kind of how that ends up happening in case you ever wonder what yeah. Yeah, is involved in that. But yeah. yeah, that is a good e- extreme case of that. Um, and that, that does make sense because, you know, I, I've always told people the more you say no, the easier it gets. Mm-hmm. to things and that makes sense because you rewire your brain to feel good for saying yeah. no so yeah and it's the thing you have to practice and we don't say no to almost anything right our time mm-hmm. our food our really it's like in this world you're expected to say yes to everything and yeah. be like over stimulated overworked over committed i mean over committed over eat it over over <laughs> eated over <laughs> ate <laughs> over ate it we we'll start our own language. Yeah, you already kind of have. Whatever. Uh, yeah. That's, S- that's say no. Here we are. This is where we ended up after trying to crack a walnut. Say no. If you're mm-hmm. someone who always says yes, you should say no. Yeah. Just a side note. I'll tell you. It's what, good for your health. When I buy that five dollar bag of walnuts, it's funny. I used to be like, these things are expensive. Five bucks for the, for this little this bag of walnuts, and now I know. I'm like, five bucks for a bag of walnuts? That's, <laughs> that's a, a steal. That's a steal. I'll pay that every day. Besides having to crack these bad boys <laughs> open. Um, that's what you pay for. You pay for the cracking. Mm-hmm. Walnut pie. I, d- I, I don't think it's walnuts. It's got to be a texture thing. So right? walnuts crumble. kind of dry your mouth out. Yeah. And I don't think that would be good on a pie. But you, you use walnuts for, like, crust sometimes, right? Which f- for what, though? Like to make the crust. Do you? I don't know. I don't make crust. I don't know. I don't make crust either. But Damn. I'm sure there's like a walnut crust. Let's see. Because it's all crumbly. You mix it with some butter. Wal- walnut pie. Stop. Maple walnut pie, bro. Okay, well, that's why. Hey, 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 you know what? It says it's a walnut pie, but there's pecans on top. 
Oh, don't you man. hate? Don't what, there's some other foods that are like that, where they call it something else, but it's only good because of this other thing. That's this has got this thing's got walnuts on it. It looks real festive. Look at this, brown sugar walnut pie. It's because there's brown sugar and butter in it. That's why it tastes good. It looks good. good. Yeah. Yeah. You know that that always cracks me up. Like when, like there's these ingredients. Yeah, you see that, that little leaf. That that shows how lucky we are, right? Make we're, a leaf out of pie crust. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. But when someone's like, oh, it's so good, it's got walnuts in it and whatever, and you're like, well, it's not good because the walnuts. Yeah. It's like when people are like, oh, I make the best Brussels sprouts. I cook them with bacon and drizzle them in balsamic <laughs> vinegar. I'm like, well, they taste good because you put this other stuff on them that tastes phenomenal, mm -hmm. not because the Brussels sprouts taste good. Yeah. And it always just makes me laugh when, when people do that. Mm -hmm. Same with, like, broccoli and cheese. Well, yeah. the broccoli tastes phenomenal because you melt the cheese all over or them. Or salad. Yeah. I love salads. No, nah, really? you like the dressing and the bacon yeah. and all the other stuff you put on there. Just open up a bag of romaine and just eat it. Do you love that? No. Nah. Nah. There's that one in a million that does. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, but nobody likes that. Come on. When's the last time you ate a salad? I got one actually two weeks ago. Don't lie to me. Where'd you get <laughs> that it? That fat. Oh, okay. I like it's a Caesar salad. See, okay. In that situation, I'll do. I'll get a Caesar when I go to a steakhouse, mm -hmm. and then get a steak. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I enjoy a Caesar salad. That, that's my that's my number one salad. But if it didn't have the dressing on it, I would not enjoy it. It's got the dressing. It's got like a little bit of the parmes was mm -hmm. it parmesan on it. Yep. Ro par Parmigiano Reggiano. Mm. And then and the then, croutons. Yeah. And if it's real Caesar dressing, it has that umami flavor. You the know, anchovies, man. The anchovies. Man. It's so good. So, it's good. That's always been my top. Other salads, like I don't want ranch or blue cheese yeah. or I don't know. And a Caesar salad, like there's no other veggies in it. Yeah, it's just romaine. It's just romaine. So I think that's another You ever get like one it. and they try to throw stuff in there and you're like, this is yeah. not a Caesar. They throw like tomatoes and you're like, yeah. what, are Cucumbers. You, what are you doing? Yeah. I'm like, Give me the romaine. Give me the dressing, leave it alone. Mm -hmm. It's perfect the way it is. Yeah. Mm. Could you imagine? With sourcing, sourcing Caesar dressing. <laughs> no, because you got to get the anchovies, go, bro. How do you do and you that? You got to go down to the ocean. You got to catch the anchovies. Then you got to, I don't know. I don't know. Pound, do you just pound them to a? Do you got to go get a? Then you have to invent a blender, so you can <laughs> blend these babies up. Blend them up. Then you need. Romaine lettuce. I mean, what? You got to grow that from somewhere. Then you got to make the cheese. It, it, it's you got to have the cow again. And you got to get the croutons. Yeah, mm. th there's a lot involved. You see how in like the, the food combinations of de deliciousness just didn't even exist. No. There, like there was no way, and in, in humanly, well, there was way humanly fathomable because we did it. Yeah. Um, but you, you you get what I'm saying, right? There was. N it was not this complex. Because most of the ingredients recently. come from all these different parts of the world. We're just spoiled, man. We are. We're real spoiled. And then when you meet someone who's like, mm, I don't, I, I've met people who are like, I don't like water. I don't like the, the taste or flavor of water. I'm like, man. <laughs> this is where we're at. <laughs> Which I get if you're used to drinking like. Yeah, if you drink soda all the time, water tastes terrible. Time. And that shows how, how much we're almost, like, manipulated. Yeah, but you know what? You know when you get that good water? Yeah, it hits <laughs> just right. Mm. Oh, man. Some you, some water just tastes good. Yeah. It depends on the, the circumstance, right? You it know, does. You know when you're truly thirsty? You know, like, after you were, like, you just had recess. You had to run around the blacktop for seven Bro, times. And you come and hit that water fountain? And you come hit that water fountain. To w and then you, you get where you're kind of out of breath. So, like, you're gasping and... And, and you're drinking at the same <laughs> yeah. time. It's the and, best. And you got to stop to get your to breath. To take a breath. And then you go back for more. But you don't even let off the button. Nah. You let it keep going. Nah, you keep going. Then you got to keep it flowing. Right yeah. That's the good water. That's some dopamine. That is. That was the simple days, right? Mm. You go do some work. You come in. You have yeah. the best water you've ever drank. And everything's all right. Mm. But, yeah, speaking of which, that's a thought game in and of itself. Just look at your food and meal and think of all the regions and places your food is like compromised of and yeah. coming from and how it's kind of crazy that you all have it on the same plate yeah like this is literally mm -hmm. from all over the world something like coconut or palm oil that sure as heck not grown here yeah so like that's <laughs> from halfway across the world probably mm -hmm. it just tons of things come from yeah. everywhere when you think of the locality and the seasonality yeah think about what, what hey, we hey, would hey. actually eat here People would be very probably depressed. If someone if someone just happened to like fast forward right to that part, 
they think these guys are real smart. <laughs> Locality and seasonality. But you didn't hear what it took yeah. to get here. They didn't hear the first expunged thirty <laughs> seconds of the <laughs> podcast. Oh man, life's a journey, man. But yeah, you would. Most food is like sparsely available to times mm-hmm. of year and. It's just important to keep the perspective. That's all we're saying. Mm. And, again, we're not, like, it's almost impossible not to, right? Yeah, we're not saying you got to live off the land. It's just interesting. Yeah, a little thought experiment. Be aware of of where everything comes from and the work. This morning I had strawberries, ground beef, eggs. I don't got no chicken farm. No. (laughs) I don't got no no cow. It's the middle of winter. (laughs) There's no strawberries. Yeah, not at all, man. Frozen strawberries. Mm, those are the best. <laughs> I like those better than fresh strawberries. Oh, for sure. I like all frozen fruit. Frozen fruit. And I don't. Why is that though? Is it just because it's frozen at peak freshness or like perfection? Probably that a little bit, so that you get it's a better flavor. Yeah. Um, and then I like the texture, of the coldness. I yep. defrost mine partially. Yeah. But not all the way. And. Yeah, I mean so. If you were to eat truly local, here we are in the middle of December in Virginia. It's now all you get is just tobacco, man. Yeah, you <laughs> tobacco. That's it. Um, <laughs> tobacco and cotton. Yeah. What would you get? I mean, what produce would be what grows here locally available right now? I don't actually know what grows in Virginia. I mean, I mean we got apples. Right, but that's only. Yeah, like right now, like right now in apples. the fall. Well, it's December, so. Well, is it winter yet, though? I don't think it's technically winter. It's probably going to be winter in a couple of days. I think, like, the end of December, I thought, was technically our, our winter time. But you, you get the point. You, you would realize, just go walk around, that there's probably, yeah, depending on where you're at. If you're in the mountains, you, there's going to be some apples, right? Yeah. If you're oh, I got you, man. near the rivers and ocean, there's going to be so fish. Right right now our availability in virginia actually a apples grow the entire year except for may and june mm. but you know what there's there's apples i don't want man no for yeah there's really you know, bad apples yeah, yeah. There's, when there's like no flavor or you know those first watermelons when they have watermelon available in like may and you're like this is not going to taste not like anything that. yeah <laughs> Dude, never <laughs> i always get excited though i see it and i'm like damn i would love watermelon yeah. but you know that it's going to just taste like the rind Hey, and here's the other thing. Yeah, that's that's kind of like the benefit of pesticides and, and all that other yeah. stuff, right? So, so all right. Ha- have it available. Check more this. Often. There's actually not a lot available in December in, produce-wise in yeah. Virginia. So we have apples. Beets just went out. No more beets. But a beet, is, is it, isn't a beet like a root? It is. I mean, it's still got to – if it's too cold, it's too cold. Like, yeah, I guess I you're guess. right. Yeah, they're frozen. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. And then um, – Greens slash spinach. So like collards and stuff. Yeah. No calories, whatever. Yeah. Uh, herbs. Those are year yeah. round. Those don't die. Yeah. You can't kill those. Uh, and then uh, sweet potatoes. Mm. That's pretty much yeah, it. So root veggies. As far as root veggies are going to be the biggest calorie source mm-hmm. like that you could depend on. Yeah, like we get all the fruit for the most part is in the summer. Yeah. For the, and then like some of it in the fall yeah. as well. But and then like greens are good. But, again, there's not many calories, right? Nah. And so roots and then deer. Yeah. Fish. Yeah, those are always available. Yeah, ducks. Duckies. Mm-hmm. Don't <laughs> you can't call them duckies. No, nah, because then you can't eat them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You add the ease to it, it's not edible no That's more. That's the hard part, man. Yeah. Hey, you know something I'll never say? Goosies. Goosies? Nah, uh, that doesn't sound no right. Problem, no problem taking a goose nah, out. Geese are hateful. I know. Like, they'll fight you to the end. Mm-hmm. I actually, w- I wouldn't hunt geese. Because if you hey, if you miss, you're done. Yeah, they, the whole squad. They're comes coming up for you, <laughs> bro. <laughs> like, you are done. Mm. Yeah. And I respect that, though. Mm-hmm. I respect it. Wa- no walnuts. <laughs> no walnuts. <laughs> nah. Unless you have a hammer. Mm. There's, There's got to be a way. There was always that dude, like, in every every civilization yeah. that could crack walnuts with his hands. Yep. It is crazy, though. Like, the guy that gave us the walnuts, he said he has just so many of them in his yard, right? And this is the season, I guess, where they're just in the autumn. And, yeah, so get get your walnuts in. But then you quickly realize. This is work. 
Yeah, you're not making a walnut pie. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, side note. If anyone's, if you live in this area, you've probably had crabs. Like, <laughs> you've probably eaten, <laughs> sorry, you've probably eaten, <laughs> eaten crabs. <laughs> Anyone who's picked crabs, like, they taste phenomenal, but the work, the work that goes yeah. into them is insane. Every, every time I'm, I eat them, I always say. You're burning more calories, well, no, right? Someone needs to come out with a diet book, right? The crab diet. Yeah, you just got to pick crabs. It, it would just be impossible. And, hey, that's another thing you talk about, how people... <laughs> Oh, I love broccoli, you know, but when it's smothered in cheese, yeah. everyone's like, I love lobster and nah, crab. As you dip it in <laughs> butter. It Come in on, butter. man. Yeah. Do you, are you a butter dipper? That's not yeah, weird. I, mean, I, 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 I can eat it without the butter and with the I butter. Prefer, we've always done it without, mm-hmm. like just obey and just eat yeah. the crab and it's good enough. Maybe it's because I just didn't want a bunch of butter, but mm-hmm. yeah. Damn, I want some crab. I want to eat some crab. <laughs> 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 that, you got to be uh, careful with, with the know. word crabs. Yeah, some blue it can crab. really <laughs> some some blue crab. That's the only that's the only one for me. Yeah, that, hey, that's the other thing. So Anthony, he's the one with the walnut tree. He lives in La Creek, and he c- catch blue crab. I'm like, man, you got you, you got it going your, on. You got your crab. You got your walnuts. Walnuts and crabs. You're good. After until like five days later, yeah. like man, I fucking hate five crabs. five years <laughs> later <laughs> turns into a crab. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No. All right, so there we go. There's your thought experiment. Let us know what you what you think. Yeah, let us know how this affects your life. Mm-hmm. You might yeah. just move on and be fine, but mm-hmm. I hope you think about it. Or you just think we're crazy. Yeah, but deep down you're like. Man, In the back of their head, though, they're gonna be like, "You're right." Damn, this did take a lot, and I only paid nine bucks for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. M and M's. Oh, that's. You sh- what if there was an M M&M and M tree? You just shake it, and they fall off. Isn't that like Skittles? They have mm-hmm. those commercials. Yeah, that's what I think of. Unfortunately, that's not how M and M's work. Nah, I wish it was. All right. Well. We hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. Bring some banter. I don't know if we raise or lower your IQ by listening to this, but. Maybe both. Maybe there was an up and down. So. That's all we got. Yeah. Until next time. We'll catch you later. As always, thanks for listening, guys. If you want to learn more, check us out at CoastalFitnessVA.com or GaryDeagle.com. We'll see you next time.